taking ample notes and we'll be sharing everything with him. So he will, he will not miss anything that comes from this meeting. Um, I do see we have Justin in here as well, um, just to kind of go over what we're going to do. Ample notes and we'll be sharing. Sorry. Um, just to kind of go over what we're going to do. I'm going to start with a news announcement that was just recently made on the 24th that came from the MDOT office. And then I'm going to pull up that action list that we sent out to the public. And Justin's going to have time to go over that, kind of talk about what the District 3 office has been doing to address it. And then we will kind of open it up to the public and allow anybody to add items to that list, ask questions, and just have a more nuanced discussion with everybody here. So with that, we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. If Latasha, you could let me share my screen, please. There you go. Perfect. Right. Hey, uh, thanks, Becca. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, just do a quick little, uh, just a just a quick introduction. Uh, we are in the middle of having our MBE night, Minority Business Enterprise night here in Annapolis uh, to address a lot of the shortcomings that's been happening with access to equity and contracts within the state. And so it's a pretty big event that's happening right now. So I have to head back down to the MBE night, but I'm gonna leave it in the hands of my trusted Chief of Staff, Becca Rhodes, uh, to lead us in this effort today while I'm away at the uh, meeting. But before I go, I just want to let you know just how bad all of y'all are, how, how amazingly bad you all are. So with all of the efforts uh, that, that we've been making all of this noise and, and bringing awareness to this issue, this just recently happened. Uh, you take a look at the, uh, at the press release that came from MDOT. Uh, there's been a 30% increase in the budget uh, that is going towards cleaning up the roads within the state of Maryland and a yeah. heavy focus on this Operation Clean Sweep for the state of Maryland, specifically focusing in on the Prince George's County roads uh, within the Maryland Department of Transportation's purview. So I want to get make sure all of y'all get a round of applause for all of the work that we've been doing coming together. Uh, and not sitting idle, allowing things to happen to our community. So because it's of you been all, happening. because of you all, this is an effort that's moving forward with the, the new administration uh, with MDOT. So thank you all for that. And we're going to continuously, this doesn't going to stop us from having these meetings. We're going to still continuously do this because though this is starting, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. There's still a lot of issues that we all still see on our roads. And so we're going to continue to hold MDOT accountable. Uh, they're on this call. And, and with that 30%, that's 30 million additional dollars to the budget. Just the FYI, 30 million. So the money's there. The accountability has to be there as well. So I want to thank you all one more time uh, for what you're doing. And uh, Reverend Richardson, I, I wanted to touch on this before I left to go downstairs. Uh, we had the conversation before about the roving cameras and uh, and how we can uh, track a lot of the, the folks dumping trash. So, like I told you, I, I remember we passed a bill uh, some time ago uh, when I first got into the General Assembly. And with that, uh, the county executive, the state's attorney's office, they've all come together with DPWT. And so they, we have roving cameras at this point. And so there is a collaborative effort now that's being coordinated with the state's attorney's office, with the uh, county executive's office uh, to track folks who are dumping trash with these hidden roving cameras uh, to see folks who drop trash within our community. And so when we see people do that, now we'll be able to see the prosecution go up. And so Reverend Richardson, thanks for bringing up that great idea. That's something that they're focusing in on. Listen, y'all, we getting things done. And only way we get things done is when we come together as a community. So I, like I said, I just want to thank you all for, for, for laboring with me in this, in this journey and in this issue. And uh, we still got a long road to go. But uh, I see my good friend, Ronette Myers, you should be here for MBE night, but uh, I'll keep you abreast of everything uh, as I head downstairs. Uh, Becca, the show is yours. 
everybody, thank you so much for continuously joining us. We're going to meet again uh, next month, and we're going to continue to hold people's feet to the fire. So thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Go enjoy MBE night. Okay, so um, for those of you who have been on this call, you may know Justin Sosabi. He works with the MDOT District 3 office and has been incredible at making sure we address some of the concerns that have been on the road. Um, so Justin, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Yeah, hey, everybody. Um, uh, pleasure to be here and continue working with the community in District 25, the Delegate Charles, Becca, and uh, the entire Delegate Charles team. Um, ready to go su through some of the stuff. We got some some info I can share with you tonight, as well as pictures. I'm trying to get. Becca, I just sent you a PDF spreadsheet. Did you see that by chance? I sent it to Delegate Charles' email. Okay, I can bring. Um, that. Would you like me to bring that up first, or bring? Uh, it back? I think we can. I think we can circle back through it. I definitely want to go through the the new topics okay. um, that are on the list, as well as touch on a couple of different things um, before we do that. And then I got some some pictures just that just came in that I wanted to share. Um, whether I need to send that to you, Becca, or if I can share my screen once the pictures are up, I guess. Um, I'll send them to you in an email. Okay, yeah, whatever works best. I can share okay. my screen or if you'd like yeah, to. Yeah, if you keep control over Zoom, because I might cancel the whole meeting somehow on accident. So. <laughs> So, a second, I'll send that stuff to you. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down to some of the newer things that we have on the list. But if anybody would like me to scroll back to hear updates on the previous action items, we can definitely do that as well. Did you just want to go ahead and start with the first one of Suitland Parkway and Route 4? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just sending you this email. The photos real fast. Okay, perfect. All right, that should be coming to you. Okay, so um, Sulin Parkway at Route 4, um, there is no update on that. Uh, last month, uh, members from our um, development team came on and kind of addressed where we are with that project. Um, there hasn't been any updates on the Sulin Parkway and Route 4 since um, that last meeting. Um, Pennsylvania Avenue uh, for the missing barriers. Um, I actually have a meeting with our Office of Structures um, at the very beginning of March to go down there on site to take a look at that, um, to look at what kind of contract we need to get in place to replace those barriers. Those barriers are precast concrete um, that were brought in as panels and put together. Um, there are currently two barriers that are, that are knocked out at the very first section of that at the intersection before you get into the playground area. Um, so we're looking at getting that fixed. Hopefully next month, I'll definitely have an updated um, piece on that about when we can expect to move forward with that. Um, the Tower House Road from Route 4, median standing water. Um, I will have our marble shop team get with our highway hydraulics division and they will definitely look into that. Um, I'll be able to report on that a little bit more. That's, that's newer to us on um, that there are standing water issues there. Um, 210 with the semis making U-turns. Um, I'm curious, I don't know who added or who whose concern that was, but maybe in the chat or maybe they can unmute themselves to let us know what the concern necessarily is with that. Um, is, is there marked no U-turn or is there signs for no U-turns at the top of that? that bridge at Kirby and Livingston? It's not, it's not, it's not marked, there's no U-turn. The problem is that is a very steep uh, uh, coming in, you know, to that bridge itself, that overpass. Okay. It's blinding spots on both, both sides of it. And with these trucks coming up there that, you know, 
you really can't see it till you, hit, till you crest the almost at the crest of the uh, uh, hill. So uh, a lot of folks are a lot of folks have been using it as a cutoff, calling themselves getting ahead of traffic, and they will cut through that so you, you end up with uh, an accident waiting to happen. Just hadn't happened yet. But I, I, I wasn't the one to put it in, but I did hear it when it was put when it was mentioned uh, okay. last time. Okay. Um, I will get our traffic division to look into that. If it is an issue, I would agree with you, especially on the 210 corridor. Um, was safe to be in the priority on that corridor. Um, I would agree that signage improvement would be the necessary steps for that to not make U-turns. Um, and then we'd also need to identify a, a location where U-turns would be appropriate. So I'll get with our traffic division. I'll get back with that on for next month. Bear with me. I'm, I'm jotting notes down as we're going through. And thank you for that, uh, Mr. Burke. Um, westbound Route 50 on ramp from 202. The 202 50, as well as the um, Kenilworth 50 ramps, are both about to get resurfaced. We've identified um, both of those locations for having major asphalt issues. As soon as the asphalt plants open back up, which should be, I mean, with the temperatures the way we're going, I'm surprised they're not. But um, typically that's gonna be mid-March to early April. Um, that's two of the first projects that we're looking at taking on um, with doing resurfacing through the area, as well as some spots on 50. So that's coming. Um, that's a good one, because it is a, a very big issue, more so in the Kenilworth, honestly, than the 202, but both of them are gonna get addressed um, early spring. So 202 from Largo High School continuing beyond White House Road. Uh, WSSC, the replacement pavement is very bad, uneven. I agree with you on that. Um, typically, the replacement pavement that they're doing is temporary, and when they get done with a completed project, they're going to come back, and they're going to actually mill and overlay the entire stretch of roadway. Um, I will confirm with them that that is what their plan is, and I'll get a date for that. Um, typically, once again, that's going to be early spring. Um, all the asphalt plants typically over the winter months and very early spring months are closed um, because you can't put down asphalt when it's 50 degrees or below. It has to be 50 degrees and rising in order to do that. Um, we'll get you an update on that. I'll talk to our utilities section. Um, if they're done and that's the, uh, the condition they left it in, um, I'll talk to our internal um, construction paving crews and see if we can get that added to the list. Um, to at least get that resolved yeah, the time being. Yeah. 214 uh, westbound from 202 until Addison Road. Uh, we also have that on the list. Um, I, that actually is on the list for doing patches. So that won't be a complete mill and overlay um, to the best of my knowledge. I will confirm that, but that should also be going early spring. The 202 southbound at uh, Lotsford Road, a uh, large bulge or bump at the intersection. Oh. I have our marble shop um, address that. They can mill that down to where it's no longer a bump. Uh, but we'll address any pavement concerns with that as well. The weeds along all the curves in the area, um, especially with the storm grates and the curve and gutter systems. Um, curve and gutter systems run right up next to typically next to. Yeah, the I'm sorry, Justin. The I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Justin. Can you just break me? Hi, I would um, like to request everyone, please put your phone on mute. During Dallas is what? So, I think yeah. Please mute yourself. Where is it? You sure it's not in a zone? Huh? Becca, Becky, can you uh, mute everybody? Um, so no. I, unfortunately, I can't mute anyone while she's sharing her screen. Okay. Okay. All right. That's better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. Um, 
193, I was, I was talking all the weeds that are growing along the curve and gutters as well as the storm grates. Um, we plan on spraying those early in the season, um, probably looking at mid-March to spray and remove all remaining that's out there. Um, that was a big issue towards the end of last summer. Um, and we did a lot of the roads spraying and removing those weeds that are growing out of the, the concrete in various areas. Um, so that's definitely 100% on our agenda. Um, and honestly, that's one of the, the very small things that makes a tremendous difference when it comes to aesthetics of the area. Um, we're, we're aware of that. So that will be addressed um, early on in the spring. Um, the solicitation and campaign signs, uh, we're still working on getting the vast majority of those up. Um, those come out just about as soon as we pick them up, they are put back out. Um, I know within the past two weeks while we've been doing this litter campaign, um, some campaigns have been contacted to go remove their signs um, as a last resort, and then we're going to go behind them and pick them up. Um, and a lot of these signs have been removed as we've been going through the, the mass litter removal that we're doing right now. 202 and White House Road, uh, the commercial tractor trailers parked overnight. Um, we need to do a better job coordinating with MSP as well as Prince George's County Police um, to get that addressed. That is not an SHA issue, um, technically. I mean, we have the signs out there, but we don't have any enforcement rights to have anything removed that has to go through the police department. I um, mean, we've put in numerous requests through Prince George's County Police as well as uh, Maryland State Police um, to have those taken care of. Um, and then it's kind of up to them to do that once we made that request. Um, a lot of the commercial tractor trailers are removing the tractor trailer long enough to where it doesn't, I guess, meet the exact language of how the law is written for an abandoned vehicle or an illegally parked vehicle. Um, which once again, I, I don't know how all of that works because I mean, I, I know that people get parking tickets for parking in front of a, a no parking sign. So I'm not sure what the enforcement issue is with that. Um, I will try since this has been a continuous problem, especially on 202 and 210 as well. Um, and some other known places that we have that haven't made this list, but we're aware of, uh, maybe we need to get a the PG police department or MSP rep or both, maybe for the next meeting to discuss um, how residents should deal with that as it becomes an issue. Um, if everybody's okay with that. Sounds great. Hey, Justin, do you mind if you go over the Suitland Parkway update just for people who may not have been here last meeting? Um, to the best of my recollection, and I apologize because I wasn't really taking notes because they were talking about it, but it's in a, a process right now where they're trying to get it designed and constructed in a different manner using a different um, contract format. Um, that's kind of really where it's stuck at because the previous way and the previous contract that they had um, that fell through. They're doing it. I'm sorry, something just popped up in the chat to call my eye. Um, I believe that they are looking at beginning construction I believe they said in the summer um, or early fall. So that should be a big plus that, I mean, it, it's hundred percent moving. They're aware of it and plan on having notice to proceed and starting the project um, sometime towards the end of summer this year. So we should be seeing that progress um, on schedule according to what the design division reported last meeting. Um, I will try to get us 100% update on that for the March meeting um, and make sure we're staying on track with that. Sounds great. Thank you so much for the updates. Um, I see Sherman Hardy has his hand up. So if he wants to go ahead and ask his questions and then we'll start taking a few questions in the chat and then pull up the pictures that you sent over. I do have... Becca, one thing real quick, um, okay. it's not on here. Um, I thought we did discuss it last time, but for Reverend Richardson, is Reverend Richardson on? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, the, the fence, Reverend Richardson at um, Surrey Service Road and Route 4, yes, they actually sir. have that They have that ordered, and I think it's about a month and a half out from actually getting it fabricated and delivered. 
So I wanted to make sure I talked to you on the meeting. I know I, we had a email exchange earlier this month, but I want to make sure you're aware that that is in progress. Yes, thank you. I received your email. Okay. Thank you, you so much. Yes, sir. Exception. I have a question, but I'll let you uh, answer Sherman's uh, question okay. first. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, thank you for... Um... Uh, you accidentally just muted yourself. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was saying thank you all for acknowledging me. I just had two quick questions. Um, one is pertaining to the exit of Schultz off of Branch Avenue. Um, we're really much more of a statement to figure out exactly what can be done because I'm concerned um, about the many uh, traffic incidents that's, that's happened at that location. Um, and before we actually have any fatalities, I was wondering if we can get some more safety mechanism and methods um, from the exit um, before it gets to that bend. Uh, I used to work at that real estate building and witness, you know, quite a few of them. Um, and it's, it's really not safe the way it is right now. And I'm hoping that um, State Highway can do something about that. But um, the other question I have as well is where are the truck stops in Prince George's County? Where are they authorized to park their trailers at? Uh, the, the primary one for... Um... Prince George's County, sorry about that, is the park and ride at 495 and 95. Um, typically in Maryland, any of the truck way stations um, are locations that are authorized and are actually published um, to the trucking industry for them to park overnight. Um, I'm not sure of the other park and rides, but I do know like the 301 um, way stations as well as the 495, 95 park and ride slash way station. Now, they, technically, they should be parked at the way station at that intersection, but they're parked along the ramps all over the place. Um, those are the only two spots off the top of my head. They are 100% authorized to park overnight. Um, anywhere else on a state road, unless they own a lot that is connected to a state road and they're actually in that lot, um, there is nowhere else that they're authorized to park overnight. Awesome. Next, I think we had Reverend Richardson with his hand up. If that answered your question, Sherman. Yes, it did. Thank you. And I hope uh, we took note of that exit. Um, yeah, it's Branch Avenue. What's the cross street again? I'm sorry. It was Schultz. Uh, Schultz. Schultz. Okay. Yeah, because you all just replaced the um, the actual um, the retainers there um, from the apex. I'll make sure um, our traffic division deals with uh, the traffic studies and um, reducing or doing anything we can to reduce known accident locations. I'll make sure that they're aware. Um, and I'll be able to report back to you next month on any updates they have or any actions that they're gonna take or if they're gonna do a study or what have you. But I'll make sure they're aware of your concerns on Branch and Schultz. Okay, um, my question is, what is the relationship that MDOT and State Highway Administration has with Maryland State Police, as well as uh, Prince George's County Police, relative to accidents on state-maintained roads uh, where damage is caused by the accident? Uh, example, damage curbs, gutters, medians, light poles, traffic lights, uh, fences, because uh, along uh, Maryland 4, it's so many uh, issues we got with cars have had accidents. They've gone into the median, and now it's an eyesore where it was beautiful when, uh, when this project was completed. Now we've had so many accidents where even the light, the light poles have been uh, knocked down, uh, curbs have been damaged, uh, as well as the media. So um, can you explain to us uh, what the relationship is and how the law enforcement agencies communicate to get these things repaired from the insurance companies? Sure. Um, 
we're going to dive kind of deep into the weeds on this because this is a statewide issue, um, not just not just solely in Prince George's County. Um, there, are, in, in a perfect world, um, we are immediately notified through our statewide operations center when there's damage done to any state facility. Um, that includes everything that you just mentioned. Um, in reality, we have gone from a system where Maryland State Police and, and Prince George's County Police actually have stickers that they would put on damaged locations that have the incident number, a date of accident, um, things like that for us to be able to, to reference. Um, right now, what we're doing is once a month we get, so in the accident reports, um, specifically for Maryland State Police, um, as well as some of the other jurisdictions, they have a box they can check on the accident report that identifies that damage has been done to state or county or local municipality property. Um, once that box is checked, we receive a copy once a month of those accident reports. Um, and then it's up to us to go back and go through for the insurance. Um, it's called our 1126 process. That's what we call accident reimbursables um, to where we go back and actually bill the insurance companies for any claims that don't involve a fatality. Fatalities, we don't, we don't bill for. Um, and that's been a long standing state policy. Um, I think everybody can appreciate or understand that at least. Um, for everything else, we should be notified. Now, what reality is, is that, I mean, we, I don't know what specific percentage, um, I mean, every poll that's knocked down is from an accident. Um, we definitely 100% do not get accident reports for every single poll knocked down. Um, every single, the biggest one that we deal with is guardrail damage. Um, for example, the the information you sent about the the fence and everything at um, Serious Service, we didn't get that information. Um, so it's all at the at the mercy of Maryland State Police or Prince George's County or whatever municipality. I know Bowie sends us a tremendous amount of stuff. They're actually really good with, with getting us information. Um, a lot of the other municipalities are as well. Maryland State Police tries to be. Um, but I want to make sure everybody understands that Maryland State Police and Prince George's County Police have an MOU. Um, and this is established in Prince George's County Police um, general orders to where the vast majority of roads in Prince George's County are 100% addressed and handled for any call of service by Prince George's County Police Department. Um, if you give me a second, I can actually tell you exactly what it is if you're interested in knowing that. Um, it is important when we're talking about things like abandoned vehicles and we're talking about, you know, all of this other stuff to where Maryland State Police, I think, gets the, the, the nod for needing to take care of things. Um, but unfortunately, it's not always them. So, um, in accordance with the terms of, and I'm reading straight from the Prince George's County Police Department um, general orders, in accordance with the terms of a memorandum of understanding executed between PGPD and MSP, the Maryland State Police has primary jurisdiction along the entire length of the following highways within the county, including the adjacent interchanges, and that's all interstate highways, US 50, US 301, and Maryland Route 3. Um, they have primary traffic enforcement responsibilities for the portions of the following highways that lie outside of 95, and that's 1, Route 4, Route 5, 198, 202, and 214. Um, PGPD has primary enforcement responsibilities on state roads and other major highways not listed above, except those patrolled by other law enforcement agencies with primary jurisdiction. So you kind of get into the whole who's responsible for what thing. Um, and we go back and forth with that a lot, especially with the ban of vehicles for some reason. But um, also with this stuff, depending on who responds is dependent on how we get that information and how we process it. I can tell you that any accident report we receive or we're repairing, um, once again, the big ones are guardrail and um, light poles. Um, we are 100%, as long as it's not a fatal involved accident and we have accurate accident information where somebody's at fault, um, we are pursuing damages be um, reimbursed to the state of Maryland for that. I want to thank you for being extremely detailed and answering my question. Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, the citizens, we need to understand this process uh, as well as, and I, I will, um, I'm not going to have you to, you, I, I'll contact you offline um, to get more thorough information or to a ask more questions, but we need to know this process and we also need to know, is it working? If it's not working, what needs to be done? Uh, 
Do you need support from uh, the community? Do you need support for us to uh, advocate um, and address our, our council members and our uh, legislators. So um, once again, thank you so much for giving us that the detailed information to my question. Yes, sir, absolutely. Thank you for such a great question, Reverend Richardson. I think next I saw Rihanna with her hand up. Hi, how are you? This is in my case. Good, how are you doing tonight? Good, thank you. Um, I received this information from my homeowners association. I have written a couple of times to MDOT and, and whoever the other entities are, but I live in the new construction off of Central Avenue and Harry S. Truman, and all of the lights between exit 15 and the Harry S. Truman off ramp are off. So it's pitch black and I'm a commuter, so I walk. Um, at, at night at four or five o'clock as I'm getting off work, it's literally, you can't see somebody if they're walking up behind you. So I was told to come to this meeting to kind of see what the next steps could be. Um, even when you're coming off of the ramp onto Harry S. Truman, there are no lights on Harry S. Truman and there's four lanes. So folks can't see the, the lane lines and they can't see if anybody's crossing the street or stopped. So I don't know if that's something we can add to action items or what the next steps would be there. I think we could add it to action items. Unfortunately, we, we have a known lighting issue um, in multiple spots in the county, and we're working with our lighting contractor to get those fixed. Um, but I can get an update on the specific area. You said Central Avenue between? Between exit 15 towards Largo mm -hmm. and the Harry S. Truman exit. OK. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Also, is this an ongoing meeting? Because as you know, I got this from my HOA, so I would like to join. So if we can drop the meeting it, schedule. Yeah, it's monthly on the fourth Tuesday of every month. Thank you. Correct, Rebecca? That is correct. Okay. Yep. And next I saw Dorothy Lowe. Hi, thank you so much for allowing me to ask the question. Justin, I have a concern for you specifically. Yes, uh, I facilitate a group called the District 5 Coffee Club, uh, which uh, Delegate Charles and, and most of the public officials in Prince George's County are aware of. We represent most of the communities in Southern Prince George's County. My concern is this. We lobbied for several years with your agency and with our, our county officials and with our state officials and even with Steny Horio uh, to get a light installed at Route 5 and Earnshaw because of the number of fatalities and other accidents that have occurred there. And we were finally successful and the light is there and the, the uh, citizens in that neighborhood are just so jubilant because they feel much safer. I was told recently that you all are considering removing that light. Is that so? Talk about a, a traffic signal at light at five and so. Yes. Yeah, I've heard, um, I haven't got a direct answer on that. Um, I've also heard the same thing that you have heard, um, but I've not heard that from anyone official internally. I was actually asked that at a recent, um, I believe meeting with uh, Councilman Harrison. Um, we had that question and I will get you an answer and an update on that. Okay. I well, know that I the, hope you, the community I hope standpoint is soon. that they absolutely do not want it removed. Uh, I hope you do it soon because if you remove it, you're going to have an outcry like you have never heard before Yes, ma'am. because we work very, very hard to get that done. And we are very concerned about those people's public safety. I know I've heard some grumbling about motorists that didn't like having to wait there. But I think mm -hmm. if you weigh the importance of human life against a few inconvenient moments of having to wait, you'll find out what's most important. So please do give me um, an answer on that as soon as you can. Thank you. Okay. And when is your when is your coffee club meetings? Do we have anybody representing SHA that attend? No, we meet every other Wednesday. Our next meeting is on March the 8th. And it is at Grace Gospel Worship Center, 5819 Kirby Road in Clinton, Maryland. 
is in the lower level of the building and we meet at 9 a.m. So if somebody from uh, SHA wants to come, we would love to have you there, but just be ready. Put your armor on because if you talk about removing that light, you're gonna have a problem. I'll send somebody else to put that message to her, I promise you. Thank you very much. I'll get you an answer on that, okay? And you said the next meeting is March? 8th. March 8th, okay. Yes, and, and for your information, if somebody wants to reach out to me, my email is carolynlow at yahoo.com, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-L-O-W-E at yahoo.com. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I think next we have Mr. Burke. Hello, and thank you. Uh, my question is basically <clears throat> back here on, on three, I guess 373 or, or Piscataway turns Livingston Road. There's been some patchwork done, but there are uh, three different areas that folks are, in some cases, veering in front of ongoing traffic to avoid the ruts and potholes. Uh, it's between the airport road and where uh, Livingston and, and uh, Livingston Road and, and 337 meet back here uh, by the water tower. Uh, so uh, is that something we can put on the agenda? I just added it to mind to follow up with you uh, next month. Um, Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. You said 373, close to the, the water tower with the passes, right? Yes, it's, uh, it's on uh, Livingston Road side. It's Piscataway, Livingston Road, it changes. Uh, so right at the airport, between the airport road and where uh, Livingston Road and 337 meet at Killers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Tamara Davis Brown. Good evening and thank you. And um, I apologize if this um, statement and question has been asked and answered already. I joined a little late actually. Um, I was in Annapolis today and I saw uh, Delegate Charles several times today. So um, I wanna thank him for continuing to hold these monthly meetings. Um, so my, my first comment is actually a, um, a compliment because as I was leaving, um, Annapolis, I saw SHA crews on Route 50, as well as on 495, the Beltway, um, actually picking up uh, picking up uh, trash and debris along 495. Um, pretty much looks like it was between 214 and just before you got to Branch Avenue. So I'm in Clinton, Maryland as well. And uh, my question is, um, I didn't see, as I'm still seeing, and although I saw in the chat, uh, my neighbors, the Brown, Venetia and Michael Brown um, said, thank you for picking up trash along Branch Avenue, uh, but there's still quite a, quite a bit, and particularly under the underpasses at um, Woodyard Road, at um, Coventry Way and Allentown Road. And so if, uh, if it could be uh, extra effort also to, to, to on those exchanges, um, that would be great. And again, um, kind of echoing what Reverend Richardson said, there's some guardrail damage um, along a Route 5 Branch Avenue, as well as Capitol Beltway that I've noticed between Branch Avenue and Central Avenue. Okay, thank you for that. And this might be a, a good real quick transition because Becca, I, I forgot about the, the litter removal um, aspect of all this. Um, so we are currently in the midst of a, a blitz. We have um, 19 litter removal crews in Southern Prince George's County alone uh, working right now. They started last Wednesday um, and they're gonna continue until we get as much um, up as possible on all of our routes. They're addressing every route, um, which kind of coincides with exactly um, what you said, Ms. Brown, that they are, I mean, you're gonna see them everywhere. Um, Becca, can you bring up or share that the spreadsheet? Yes, just give me one second. Um, for those who were on the meeting last month, we had a, a really good discussion about how Delegate Charles wants to take some measurements or um, be able to summarize kind of what we're doing and where we're, we're working, as well as the amount of litter that we're removing um, by a mile point basis. 
So this, and we don't really need to go through it. Um, this is what our crews are doing. I mean, they've actually gone back to the beginning of the year and it shows on a daily basis where our crews um, have been, um, what specifically they're doing. And you see that there's a debris removal and litter pickup. Litter pickup is actually where you take the pickers and you pick every single piece of litter that you see and put it in trash bags. Debris removal is where they're more so getting um, the larger items um, that need to be removed. And you can see the 10 members that we've had associated with it, the equipment, I mean, the whole nine yards, where they're at, north, south, both directions, if they're on the shoulder, the median. Um, and it's really broken down well to show exactly where they've been and what they're doing. These mile points in the middle um, coincide with a mile point book that we have. It's published online, but it shows each one of those mile points is a feature on the roadway, whether that be um, a cross street or a bridge or um, some kind of structure that identifies exactly where that mile point is. Um, and then the quantities are in tonnage. So you got to do a little bit of conversion, but since January 1st um, through today, and this is not really including any of the litter that they've been picking up in the blitz, they picked up 186.74 tons, um, which equates to 373,480 pounds of litter. And this is solely the Marlboro shop, um, which is responsible for everything 50 and south with the exception of 50. So everything south or however you want to look at that, south of 50 um, is the Marble Shops area. Everything north of 50 as well as 50 is the Laurel Shops area. So you can kind of see what we've been doing on a daily basis um, as well as how much litter we've been picking up. Um, uh, um, thank, you, thank you for that. And I forgot to mention that also on Maryland, 223, which is Woodyard, which uh, turns into the Scataway Road. Mm -hmm. I noticed that there was some um, cutting of the grass, but of course that exposes the trash that hasn't been picked up. Okay. So it, it, it looks even more unsightly with the, the grass cut, but the trash still hasn't been removed along uh, 223. Okay, I will have them Thanks. address that. We're not cutting grass. Um, yet, but like, that doesn't stop anybody else from doing it. So we'll definitely get out there and take a look at it, okay? Thank you for sharing this spreadsheet. This is awesome. We will definitely be relaying this out to everybody um, in the call through our constant contact newsletter. Um, did you want me to stay on this for a second? Um, no, you can, if, they, if people wanna see just kind of how shocking some of the things are that we're dealing with, if you wanna bring up the, the couple of photos I sent, um, just on some of the things that they found in the past couple of days while they've been picking up a litter along the roads. While I do that, Belinda Queen, did you want to ask your question? I have a question. I have a comment. I just want to say thank you to Justin and Delegate Charles. So I don't know if most of you remember if you were District 3 Coffee Club. We invited Justin out last year in November. And he started out our coffee club. I think I got him because I went to either Wendika or Tom DeNoga's meeting. And he was coming every month to that meeting as I attend other meetings. And I invited him out to the coffee club. Nick was there. We were having so many state highway issues that we, I said, Nick, I need you to jump on it. And Nick jumped on it in partnership. And from then he's been having these monthly meetings. Justin has been doing a great job. You guys, excuse my dog in the background. But I just wanted to give you your kudos because you didn't shy away. Even after that meeting, you sent me emails. You were answering people questions on the coffee club for July that month. You constantly have been working with Nick and, um, and all the changes. Even when we get emails, I'm sending things to you and Nick. So I want to say kudos to you, Justin, because you didn't run away from the problem. Not only have you been helping and working really good with Delicate Charles, but you also have been actually a great show that you have been a great team player and leader for what's going on in Prince George's County. So again, I say kudos. And then I'm just, I'm going to send you another email because in June this year, I need you to come back to the coffee club again. So I just want to give you and Delicate Charles your kudos because you guys are doing a great job. Thank you, Ms. Quinn. I appreciate that sincerely. And I think it's what the, the residents of the county in this district deserve, honestly. Um, and I think it makes a major, major difference when we can hear directly from the community 
instead of resolving the things that we think need to be resolved, resolving the things that actually mean something to the people that live in the community, I think that goes a long way. So thank you for that opportunity um, and give me that opportunity because a lot of people didn't have to. So I thank you for that. And I will send you your monthly check for saying nice things, I promise. <laughs> You're welcome. So thank you. Um, so Justin, I did have the the stat spreadsheet, but I didn't receive the pictures. I think I Tasha gave you access to share your screen if you wanted to try, or if you just want to try and send it over to me again while we take another question. Um, I will try to forward it to you real quick. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Ms. Shea, if you wanted to go ahead and ask your question. Hello, um, Shay Newman. I have a, a question and a statement. Uh, a couple weeks ago on the Beltway in between Pennsylvania Avenue and Richie Marlboro exit, on a Sunday, on my way to church and on my way back, I saw there were cleanup crews. And it was kind of interesting of what is y'all methodology for cleaning up? Because they were in the median on one side and then they came back the other side, but it looked like they were only doing a small area. Then I think a couple of days later or a week later, you're fighting against the wind. So then it was all this trash just came out of nowhere. And now it looks like nothing really even happened on the beltway. So are you constantly, it, is your methodology to clean up a whole section, all four, all four areas, meaning the median on both sides and then the middle part? Or is it you're going to focus on this small median area, clean up the whole median, and then you'll do the inner beltway and the outer beltway later? Because uh, the methodology seems kind of weird. Um, so the methodology... Unfortunately, we don't typically have enough crews that can take care of um, both right shoulders and the median at the same time. So the, the methodology is typically they're going to do um, either the median for a, a distance of time or they're going to do the right shoulders to a location, turn around and come back. Um, right now, we're trying to address things all over the place and they get stuck. I mean, you might see a crew um, in one location for an extended period of time. And if these photos would get sent through to Becca, I mean, I could explain kind of a little bit better why um, they might be in a location, but unfortunately there's no efficient way to pick up the litter right now. I mean, it's, it's literally people with hand pickers and trash bags picking up everything that they see. And that, that takes a significant amount of time. And Becca, that it just got kicked back again for some reason, it's not delivering it. So maybe, um, I can share my screen, which I don't know necessarily how to do, but. Yeah, oh. you should be able to press the button at the bottom and then it'll okay. just populate your screen. Okay. Them up. So are we, I know you explain back about the procurement and everything, mm -hmm. but has Prince George's County, I remember back in the day where they used to use people for community service. And I understand you say you had to have those crash vehicles because of the high speeds. So now are you just using your employees on the weekends on overtime or do y'all still have a contract with that company called community somebody I used to see all the time up by route 50. We still have multiple contracts in place for okay. litter removal Um, the community company you're referencing, I believe is a um, sponsor a highway program. Okay. Okay. Um, which is a little bit differently, but we do have state forces. We have contract forces. We actually just got inmate litter crews back to the upper Marlboro shop. So you'll be seeing them out okay. um, frequently in the areas, as long as they're um, not locked down in their facilities. Um, so we have multiple crews that are out working, picking up litter and it's not just on overtime. It's all the time. Yeah. I just see the litter crews mostly on Sundays, especially on the beltway. I don't see them too much like I used to. It seems like we're trying to, I haven't seen them in a while. That's all. Okay. And Becca, can you see, did my video share? Yep. Your screen is 
up front. With, uh, with the tires or with something else? It's tires right now. Okay. So that, that's something that we found, um, unfortunately, this week. And that kind of goes to show you that once we get a crew on a specific location, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of tires dumped just at one location. And there's probably seven or eight of these photos at different locations where this is what ties our crews up. Um, this would be an example of why you see a crew not moving all day um, because they're literally hauling every single one of these tires or whatever else has been dumped um, within the right of way out of and climbing up the hill and trying to, to deal with things like that. So I just wanted to show that as an example, because that's something that literally today we got those photos in um, from one of our Laurel shop crews. And like I said, there's probably seven or eight more of different locations that are similar um, in quantity to that exact same issue that we're looking at right there. So. And now back, I'm trying to share it back to you. Um, let's see. Um, there should be something at the top that says stop share. Yeah, I lost everything. Hold on. No worries. Oh, there we go. Okay. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I definitely think that articulates the issue. Just the amount that needs to be picked up. Oh, it's crazy. Um, it's unfortunate. So, and I mean, everybody, I, I hope you understand. I mean, we're not literally burning money, but this is definitely money that, I mean, we're spending time and efforts in your taxpayer dollars, my taxpayer dollars, everybody's money to do something that unfortunately within the next month is going to look very similar to what it did prior to these efforts took place. Um, that's the unfortunate reality with what we actually have going on right now. So this is definitely part of the solution, um, but it's not all the solution. All right, Miss Betty, did you want to go next? Thank you for allowing me to speak. I just need some clarity. I was trying to look at the log that he had on and all I saw was uh, Central Avenue and his stated shoulder. There's a, quite a few ramps that come off of Central Avenue um, that are very dirty as well. And I think someone spoke to the lights on that ramp. So. Uh, the ramp that come around uh, off of Harriet's Truman, well, uh, going, uh, Harriet's Truman, going over by the shop, which is a state ramp. So I'm told that ramp is really bad also coming on to Central Avenue. And then on the opposite side, coming off of Central Avenue to Harriet's Truman and to the 202 ramp. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, that's noted. Um, the the ramps, when we're looking at the spreadsheet, it would be included. The mile points would would identify the ramps. So if it's Central okay. Avenue at a specific ramp, okay. um, those do have mile points that identify those. And I'm not saying that they are. Um, I'm just saying when we're simply looking at the spreadsheet, um, there's a lot more behind the, the curtain, if you will, about what that explains. But it is noted. Um, I'll make sure that the crews are definitely aware of that. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Carletta Lundy. Oh, hi. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I would just like to say thank you for this call. Um, I have two comments or questions. Well, two comments. So we often hear in these meetings about um, we don't have enough um, county staff to do the work. And I'm just thinking outside of the box. I don't know if you all have done this or not. Um, but I was wondering, um, have we thought about um, employing and deploying those persons who are able, who are in our um, homeless shelters or places like that, to have them to become part of our ambassadors to pick up litter? I don't know if we, how that would work, what we would do to do that. But I know in my neighborhood, there's a gentleman and he just picks up, he's picking up trash and he has his sign out there but he's also working, he's doing something. You know, he's not just having to sign out, give me money or what have you. He, he helps to pick up the trash and pick up the litter um, in our community. So that's my first thing. And then I wanted to know, and I'm sure you probably already do this, you have contracting um, contracts with hauling and trucking companies. 
um, to help with some of the, um, the the debris or what have you, the, like the tires that you have to pick up? Do you only focus on your staff or do you have um, contractors that you um, work with or subcontractors? Um, so I answered the, the first question, or I'm sorry, the second question first. We do have contracts that are in place um, solely for debris and litter removal. Um, that's something we rely on heavily as well as state forces um, adopt a highway, sponsor highway and inmate litter removal crews. Um, we also rely or the, the various communities assist us tremendously um, with doing community pickups. I mean, we try to work with them as much as possible as well um, to assist any way we can, whether that be providing manpower traffic control or simply removing the litter once it's collected um, so kind of all of the above approach to what you're asking um, the first question that is something that would be probably best addressed by the county um, i don't know if they have anyone on that can speak to that but i can certainly reach out um, to a couple of contacts and try to get an answer regarding exactly what you're asking um, that's not something that the state highway administration um, is involved in. Um, that would be more like a local municipality or county effort. Uh, bringing... All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm just going to address a question that was in the chat a little bit earlier, around 750. Um, e. Hart said lines need to be repainted on the circle off exit 13. Are there any efforts being directed to repainting of the roadway lines? Yeah, Beck, and I think we have, one second. Um, I think Becca, that's on one of our follow-ups. Already, I think it's been brought up in the past and it is, yeah, lines need to be repainted at Circle off of Richie Marble Road, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's on one of our follow ups um, from the 1025 meeting. And as soon as the weather breaks in the first or second week of March, we have our line striping company actually coming back in. We just met with them last week. And that is on the list of items to be refreshed as soon as they start moving. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Faye Martin Howe. Good evening. Uh, first, want to say to Delegate Nick Charles, thank you so much for, for hosting these meetings and thank you, MDOT, for taking the time to participate. I have um, actually three questions or comments. Um, the light near, this is on Central Avenue, the light near Campus Way South going from Sea Pleasant to going towards Bowie. It's right the turn right after you get past the MVA. The lights down there, you can barely see how to turn into the MVA and how to turn into the shopping center that comes after the MVA. Um, I, don't, I don't know whose responsibility it is, but there are no lights once you get past kind of like past the beltway. The lights near the turns, there are like a couple of turns before you get to Campus Way South. There are a lot of turns before you get to Campus Way South, but up once you get past the MVA, the MVA, you can barely see the turn and at the uh, shopping center, which is the next turn, you can't see the turn. <laughs> it is really, really dark there. I don't know if the light is out, but it's, I think there is a light pole there, but there is no light coming from that pole. I have noted that and I will get us an answer on that, okay? Okay. And then I see the litter blitz sign on Central Avenue and you might've already talked about this. I've been in and out of the Zoom because my, for some reason it's messing up. But anyway, the litter blitz on Central Avenue, have you actually done some cleaning on, on Central Avenue since that sign has been up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do you ever use prisoners for the cleanup? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have inmate crews that just returned to Marble Shop, and we have inmate crews that have been um, at the Laurel Shop um, 
as long as they're not locked down due to COVID or due to other issues within the, the institutions they're, they're coming from, which is the Dorsey Run facility in Anne Arundel County. Uh, for How they, George's County? What's that? Do they work in Prince George's County? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because I, I haven't seen them out here. Well, the, the right. Marlboro Shop area, they've been, they've been out for probably the past six months um, due to Department of Corrections resources. Um, we just got word and email this week that they're returning to Marlboro Shop. And forgive me, because I don't know if they actually have or if they have a tentative date of next week. But they are, they're returning a crew to the, the Marlboro Shop um, to be used or utilized out within their roadways as well. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, Reverend Richardson. All right, thank you. Uh, this message is to Justin. I just want to inform everyone as the president of the Coalition of Central Prince George's County Community Organizations, uh, I am president and our vice president, Belinda Queen Cunningham, who's also president of the, of the Coffee Circle for Div Division Three and Division Eight. On Saturday at, at our meeting, uh, our organization agreed to have litter as one of our uh, major issues, uh, priority issues that we're going to take on this year. And with that, I'm bringing back up to the forefront tonight about a program that I shared a year ago. I'm still um, pushing this and I want uh, our elected leaders, community leaders, and concerned citizens to join in this effort to push and request for this. Um, as I shared before, the Department of Transportation in North Carolina and South Carolina, uh, specifically North Carolina, has a litterbug program that is uh, very effective. Um, I strongly say we need to bring it to uh, Maryland. And there are three ways that if a citizen sees someone uh, littering, that they can report uh, the litter bug, as, as we would call them. Uh, there is an app that they have, there's a phone number you can call, and there's an online system. What they do is they send out um, they sent out a letter. It's basically a um, warning letter to the vehicle registered owner, uh, informing them of the law and the fact that littering is, is, is illegal and what the consequences are. Uh, the letter is basically a warning and it's educating uh, the owner of the vehicle of the law to encourage him or her or whoever may have been driving the vehicle not to litter in the state. On the second offense, there is a fine. On the third offense, the fine is increased and then their points taken off their license. The Department of Transportation in these states have a partnership with the state police uh, as well as with the um, Motor Vehicle Administration. All of them are working together. And so when you ride along these roads, you don't have the problem we have here. Enforcement is a major uh, key as well as education in these states. And I'm sounding alarm again tonight. We, we need this in Merlin and I, I'm behind it. I'm pushing it. And anybody else want to jump in with me? Uh, the, the Department of Transportation has provided me with uh, how they do it, um, the letter and everything else. And we can have a meeting, you can come to the coalition or we can have a special call meeting uh, for the general public on Zoom or in person. So thank you. I, so I said all that to say, my question is, are you in support of us bringing uh, this to the state of Maryland. Thank you. Reverend Richardson, that, that question 
To me or to Delegate Charles? Uh, that question is to you. Uh, Delegate Charles, our elected leaders, our community members, they can put it in the chat. I, I put my email in the chat. I need anyone who's uh, proposed or uh, who supports this effort to join with us because we're trying to improve the quality of life in our county and our state. And we have to put a stamp and to stop on this littering. Thank you. Hey, Justin, can I say something right quick? Wenton Johnson, um, Dr. Rich, um, Reverend Richardson, you met me before, Wenton Johnson. I work for um, SHA, and I was at the 202 Coalition yesterday with Senator Benson. Me and Senator Benson for the last year or two have been going back and forth with the delegates and the senators, then putting it on the floor in Annapolis in reference to exactly what you just said. And yesterday I did speak on behalf of SHA and MDOT about that. And the police was there, the state troopers was there and PG County police was there. And I did throw it at them, let them know that they're not enforcing the litter laws and we need them to help. And exactly what you said, Senator Benson had been putting it on the floor and we've been trying to get it on the floor. And I back you hundred percent if um if needed to um to to try to get it put back on the floor um in this session if we can try to get any if delegate Charles can get it in and put it on the floor we can go up there and talk to them and have them back us because I've been doing it um with Senator Ben for like last two years we've been trying to get it taken care of and exactly you. what you're saying is the truth okay thank you Thank you. And, and, and can we also get you to let us know when you put it back on the floor so we as coalition members can show up, speak on behalf, and show out support? Belinda, you know who I am. So you know I know I am. who you are, I but I just want to make sure we did. We in Annapolis, letting them know we, we want it. Right. <laughs> I will be in Annapolis next week, and I will find Annapolis next week for sure. And I will find out, and I'll be talking this in the next day or two, and I will find out if we can get it taken care of, okay? Thank you. Um, just speaking on behalf of the delegate, I know this is a huge priority for him. The deadline to file bills was January 20th, and we went ahead and pursued the MDOT scheduling bill this session to try and push that through. But as this is a priority, we are more than willing to workshop legislation throughout the interim to make sure it's something that we, we get maximum eyes on at the start of the next legislative session. And Miss Mrs. Terry Nuridin. Would help to unmute myself. Um, I would like to say, you know, good evening to everyone. And um, I certainly appreciate being able to attend these meetings with uh, Delegate Charles and with the uh, the M dot representatives uh, since they started. Um, I had two comments. Um, before I make my original comment is that uh, I'm a strong advocate of education and of lowering taxes and all that's been said. And um, I think one of the things that we have to do is sort of like a wraparound service, which the Reverend just spoke to and so did uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, maybe this Earth Day, we can have something about litter. Um, in the announcement, something was said to tell the people, despite this effort and the extra money, trash belongs in the trash can. And I think something that Mr. Justin said um, brought that to my forefront was that we can spend this money now, we can make these efforts and we will just have to repeat it because the litter will be repeating. So we're taking tax dollars and we're just making a circuit of trying to deal uh, with these issues uh, continuously. So if we start and I'm a big advocate of public education. If we start at that level, just little things, I think by the time they drive, they won't be littering the highway. And even though that's a long-term effort, I think it's realistic because that's what public education is about, teaching us to be good citizens in our republic. Um, Ms. Queen and I were at the session that um, Delegate Charles had with the, this bill was presented to MDOT bill. And before that, I wasn't aware that this had uh, been tried again to get some sort of funding, some sort of understanding. And I think that uh, I know I would gladly uh, zoom in on uh, if there was a session that we could show our support 
for uh, things that would keep our, 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 our county clean and, and our county clean and get some support from the community, get some support uh, from the, the, the residents. Uh, Ms. Queen and I waited almost two hours to speak, but we, we waited to speak. So I would say that I support the Reverend's uh, uh, idea, and I would certainly take that back to my civic inspiration group. I would say that being uh, sending testimony, which is in itself is difficult uh, since it, you have to load it up, or waiting as Ms. Queen and I did for a couple of hours to speak two minutes, um, you know, to, 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 to try to make that robust. And we will continue to do what we can do, but to try to get more people involved, if no more from the, the beauty of it and what the mind is, what happens to the mind when it sees this type of litter continuously uh, and to get the young people not to want to litter when they're, when they're in elementary school. And so consequently, when they become adults and drive and obey the traffic laws, they won't litter. Um, and uh, while I'm here, I would like to see that happen, but that's a long-term solution but I think it would be permanent when we think about recirculating money continuously um, to do this. So short term and long term and then investment in the, the youth that we can help get them away from that because it does destroy the mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. We definitely appreciate your insight. And Ms. Shea. Hello. Um, my other question is, where are our federal counterparts? Because Suitland Parkway is a mess um, between Naylor Road and all the way up to Pennsylvania Avenue. The trash is just crazy. I drove to D.C. on Monday or Tuesday and back. And I was like, wow, the dumping on Suitland Parkway is is not that great either. And so where are our federal counterparts to, to make sure the grass and the weeds and also all the trash is picked up on Susan Parkway? We have, I wouldn't say regular routine, but we, we do have frequent uh, meetings that involve the National Park Service. Um, I can get a contact for them and either distribute it at the next meeting or see if they can actually attend the next meeting. Um, but I will definitely tomorrow morning reach out to that contact and let them know that concerns have been expressed um, for Suitland Parkway. Yeah, because I would think, not saying he's above everything, but if that being the route for the president of the United States to travel to get to Andrews, you would think they would do a better job, but it looks bad. Okay. I'll make sure I'll pass that along um, and see if we can get a, a representative to either prepare a message for next meeting or attend. Sounds great. Does anybody else have any questions? I know we had a few things in the chat just to put on notice and all of those things will be uploaded to the action list that'll be shared and reviewed next meeting, but were there any other specific questions? I got Becca one that's coming up right now from uh, Reverend Richardson. I'll get you the contact. We, we definitely do have um, internally, that's gonna be our adopt a highway program. Um, if it is less than what would, I guess, meet the threshold for that program, um, you can reach out to me directly. I've worked with a, a couple of different communities um, relatively recently, and uh, we can provide, I've seen some of the other questions, we can provide a lot of resources, whether it be, you know, vests, trash pickers, bags, um, removing the litter once it's collected, um, various different things, traffic control um, on a smaller level, and then the, the larger level would be the Adopt the Highway program, um, which would be an ongoing effort, and we do have contact people for that. Um, each shop has a contact person. So I'll get that information um, for you. I actually shoot that to you an email um, later this week, if that works for you. That, that'll that work for me. Uh, someone else asked that and I was uh, informing them that of that program, as well as the fact that the Department of Public Works and Transportation also has the same program where we can adopt the block uh, mm -hmm. at, on county maintained roads. 
as well as uh, any organization or community can host and organize a community cleanup and uh, Department of Public Works and Transportation. And now you confirm that MDOT or State Highway Administration will provide uh, the, the uh, necessary uh, resources as needed, like grabbers, trash bags, the vests. Um, when we when we normally host community cleanups, we do let our law enforcement partners know uh, they've been our partners for a long time and they join us. They will have the crews out with the lights flashing to make sure we're safe. Um, as a matter of fact, the last cleanup we had last year, we did a county maintaining roads as well as we went on Merlin 4 and they, they assisted us, the Prince George County Police Department did. So thank you for answering that question. I look forward to the uh, information that I can share with um, the other leaders on the call who uh, requested the information. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. And I also see one from Mr. and Mrs. Hatcher. Is there anything scheduled for resurfacing repair for the I-495 on-ramp from Route 202? Um, I can give you an answer, not off the top of my head. Um, 495, you said on-ramp? Yep, yeah, from Route 202. I'll get an answer for uh, next meeting on that. Okay. Rebecca, who did that come from? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hatcher. Okay. Thank you. And I'm thinking this will be the last question of the night, Ms. Shea. Sorry. Just one, one quick question. This is a FYI, Mr. Justin. Once your crews are out there picking up trash. What is the turnaround time for somebody to come and pick up the bags? Because I see a lot of times there's trash pickup. Those bags are left on the side of the road and I'm assuming somebody has to come pick them up. Yeah, so a lot of the times that the trash is left on the road, it is a community or it's adopt the highway. Um, and we've, we've ran into this um, probably most frequently on 210, to be completely honest with you. Um, and Mr. Bettis can, can attest to that. And we're trying to do a lot better job of making sure that when we have crews riding around and they see these bags that they stop and pick them up instead of just riding by them and acting like they're another part of the road. Um, in a perfect world, obviously they would pick up every time they see the bags laying on the, um, the roadway. Um, unfortunately, that's that's not what historically has happened. Um, so while we're retraining kind of our, our mindset with some of our crews and some of our, our supervisors with those crews, we're also asking that anytime that any of the community sees that or the actual community itself that picked it up, that simply just give us a call um, and we'll get those picked up. And I think that's worked out probably better than, um, than not. Honestly, and Mr. Battis can probably attest to that a little bit more, but every, I think every time that we've gotten notified at the appropriate shop, um, they've made it a point because I've made it a, a priority of ours that if the community is going to help pick up trash, the absolute least we can do is go pick up the bags in a timely fashion um, to not waste that precious resource of having somebody help us out that doesn't necessarily have to. So if that kind of answers your question, um, they should be picking them up immediately. Um, the quicker we know about it, the better off we're honestly going to be uh, for the time being. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Justin, as always, for coming through and delivering some really quality updates. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and end this meeting now and start working on all of the March updates, making sure that we have everything in the chat captured and making sure that tomorrow morning we will send out um, that spreadsheet that we went over today and information about the next meeting, which will be on March 28th at 7 p.m. Um, thank you again, Justin, and thank you everyone for being here. We've made great strides, but as Delegate Charles said, there's a lot of work to do and it's gonna take us all, so. Thank, thank you, you Becca, you did a great job, sweetie. <laughs> Outstanding meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Night, God bless. Have a great night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.
Enjoy the rest of your week, everyone. Good night, all. Good night. Thank you, Reverend Richardson, for all the information. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Thank you for hosting the meeting on behalf of your uh, boss. Of course. You're doing a wonderful job as <laughs> chief of staff. Did